Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to be dehydrating figs. I'm Rebecca from StockingMyPantry.com. So what I have here are some figs. I don't know what the weight is or anything, but I got these from a neighbor and I was really happy about that because I have a fig tree. I planted a fig tree this year, but it's not bearing yet. And so it was really nice to get these figs, but figs do not last very long. And uh, these are at the point of really needing to be eaten or something. And so I know I can't get through all of them on time, so I'm going to be dehydrating them. Now, this is my first time dehydrating figs. And anytime I dehydrate something new, I consult this book, The Dehydrator Cookbook, and it is by Tammy Gangloth. So what I love about this book is that in alphabetical order, it lists fruit and vegetables, and then it gives you the information on what you need to do to dehydrate it. So I'm looking at figs, and uh, it shows that the temperature is 125 degrees. It also talks about preparation. Wash the fruit thoroughly and remove any stems. Cut into quarters, wedges, or thin slices as you prefer. Place the quartered fig skin side down on the dehydrator trays, and you don't want to overlap them and then dehydrate for 18 hours. When dehydrated, fresh figs should be hard and feel dry, but still be somewhat flexible, okay? So I'm gonna start off with uh, just preparing these and uh, bring you along, and then I'll show you the whole dehydrating process as well. In the instructions, it said to quarter them, but these figs are really small so I'm just going to cut them in half. It did also say to cut off the stem end. So I'm going to do that. And it said one option is to slice them. And I like that idea. However, I suspect that they will stick. I'm going to do a few sliced like this just so I can test it out. And I'll find out if they do end up sticking and then I'll know not to do them that way again. If I have a little piece like this, I'm not gonna bother with it. Um, so I'm gonna do just a few sliced and then I will start cutting them. If something is bigger, like this is a little bigger, I might go ahead and quarter it. Actually, I was gonna slice that, but we'll just pretend. <laughs> and I'm, you can see over, over here in the corner, I'm putting the ones that I've quartered or halved, I will be putting them Actually, let me move so you can see a little better. Skin, the skin side down. And I suspect that that is because the uh, side, side with the inside, I'm suspecting that that is going to stick more. Okay? So, now you see like this one here is small, so I'm just going to cut it in half. Okay? So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through and cut up all of these, and then uh, and then we'll I'll take you to the next step, and we'll talk about it at that time. Mm, this one doesn't look too good, so I think I'm just going to put it aside. One thing that is nice is that these do not have to be blanched. You know, a lot of things you need to blanch before you dehydrate, and if you did need to blanch, it would say so in this book, and it doesn't say so, so I am not going to blanch. And it's kind of subjective whether or not I'm quartering or halving them. That's a smaller part. So we're just going to have a little bit of variety. You can see that for the most part, there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, except that I'm not going to slice very many of them because I'm afraid that they'll stick. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of these off camera and I'll show you what I've got when I'm all done cutting them up. Okay, so I have the first tray done to let you see it there. You can see I did a combination of sliced. I did some quartered and some halved. I just kind of played it by ear regarding the size. This is how many that I have left. And I'm hoping to just, I have three trays from on my, uh, my Kasori that have the mesh uh, 
sheets, the mesh little liner things. So I'm hoping that that I will be able to just use those three trays. I'll bring you back when I'm all done. Okay, this is the third tray and I still have these left. So I'm going to be using one of the trays that has the fruit leather tray on it. Um, I just wanted to point a couple things out to you though. You can see that on the tray, none of them are touching. A couple of maybe kind of slid together and I'm gonna make sure that they're not touching. None of the pieces are touching and they will just dry a whole lot better because of that. Also, I wanted to say there's a couple of reasons why I am using either the uh, mesh screen or a fruit leather tray. One is that the, the Kasori has these metal uh, trays, which are really nice because they're very well made, but they do get kind of hot. And so I think when you're dehydrating, it's better for the f uh, food, unless it's something like jerky, not to be directly on the metal uh, because it does get kind of hot. So I prefer not to put it directly on the metal. If you're cutting things small, they could fall through. I don't think these would, especially the ones that are cut in half, but possibly they would. But then a big reason also is because fruit with a high sugar content definitely has a tendency to stick and it's less likely to stick on this plastic it's just easier to get off than on the metal so i'm going to go ahead and uh, cut up the rest of these and put them on a fruit leather tray and then we'll get the dehydrator started okay i now have the dehydrator loaded up with four trays three with the mesh one with the fruit leather this bowl here are the pieces that I cut off or there were a few figs that were just too far gone so I'm just going to toss them and then I have actually just a few figs that are hard and uh, not ripe yet so I'm just going to put them on the counter and we'll eat them as they ripen. Okay so Okay, I'm going to set the temperature at 125 degrees and the time at 18 hours and press start and then I'll bring you back in the morning to show you what things look like. They won't be done then. I'm getting ready to go to bed actually pretty soon now. So these will be going all night while I'm sleeping and um, I'll give you an update in the morning but I don't expect them to be uh, dehydrated yet but I'll show you what they look like. Be back in the morning. Hello everyone. It's now the next morning. You can see there's eight minutes and 38 or eight hours and 38 minutes still on the uh, time to go. So these have been going uh, about nine hours and 20 minutes. Let's say just a little over nine hours, which is the halfway point approximately. And so I don't expect them to be done, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what they look like. They're starting to dry, but they definitely still, as expected, have a long way to go. They haven't shrunk up a whole lot, but they're getting there. And so anyway, I'll bring you back uh, later. It might not be till this evening and uh, show you what they look like. They might take just this, you know, other eight hours or they may take longer. We'll see. So anyway, I'll show you what they look like later on today. Hello everyone. The 18 hours, the initial 18 hours is just about finished. You can see it was about 35 minutes to go, but I'm at a time now where I can take a look at it. So I'm gonna open it up and check it out. And I'm gonna pick one of the smaller ones just to see. Let's see if you can. It's still very flexible and sticky. And so definitely not ready, especially since that's one of the smaller ones. So I am going to, when this timer goes off, I will actually reset it for about another seven hours. And uh, that will bring me up to what's about my bedtime tonight. So hopefully it will be done by then. And if not, I will um, also run it overnight. But I'll bring you back in about six or seven hours and give you an update on what it looks like at that time. 
so I'll see you in just a bit. Hello everyone. It's now at uh, 13 and a half hours basically remaining. I had put it for about another 18 hours. So that means it's done about four and a half hours since I made my last update. And so I want to take a look at it. And I think that this one, actually I wanted to look at the ones, the part that has the, yes, the, um, let's see if I'll put it down here so you can see. Remember I did some that are the round ones and I was thinking they might stick. Well, they haven't really stuck. And those are completely dry. Those are good. So if I have it to do over again, I might do more of those because these are still quite soft. So I, mean, I'm, I might end up letting them go overnight just to make sure they get all the way dry. But that's something worth considering. Now notice that they didn't really stick bad like I thought they might and they are nice and hard so I forgot to check them when I checked at 18 hours these may have been done after 18 hours because they're really uh, good and dry now I'm not going to bother taking them off I'm just going to leave them in but uh, these definitely have a, a ways to go so anyway uh, unless I stop it tonight before bed I will let these run overnight and I'll bring you back tomorrow and give you an update. Okay, it's the next morning and I looked at some of these and some, like this one, is still sticky and, and very flexible. And then there's other ones like this that are very hard. So what I think I'm going to do now is just go through and pull out the ones that are hard and leave the ones that are still sticky in. So I'm just going to drop the hard ones into a jar. And uh, you don't need to watch all of that. But I will then uh, go ahead and keep it running for the rest of them to completely dry. I'll give you a final update uh, later on today so that you'll know how long it took altogether. Hello everyone, here is the final result. Um, normally when I dehydrate, I measure how much I have before I start and I forgot to do that this time. But if you recall at the beginning, everything was very close together on the mesh and so that gives you some idea of how much everything shrunk up. These did end up taking about 22 hours to completely dehydrate for all of them and if I had it to do over again, I will actually slice them because the sliced ones did not uh, stick on the mesh and they dro uh, dried much, much faster. So anyway, that's how I think I do it in the future, but these taste great and I'm looking forward to eating them and possibly rehydrating them and using them in some baking or something like that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would like the video and if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.